Yo, what's up everybody? It's your man Tim Swain. I told you, this series is dedicated to the children. And when I first came to Ghana, I was looking for books that reflected my son, that he can look at and see himself in it. And I'm so happy that I found this gem, Booksy, an online bookstore as well as literacy center that's dedicated to telling the African children's story by African writers in their own voices. And I'm going to sit down today with the founder to hear more about the story. So let's go. What's up, everybody? I'm back. I told you I had a very special guest here today, so I'm going to allow her to introduce herself, and we're going to jump right in. So thank you so much for being with me today. Uh, so please let the folks know who you are. My name is Edem Toponu, and I'm the creator of Hoopsie. Wow. So, you know, one of the things I was uh, telling folks in some previous videos is when I relocated to Ghana, it was very difficult for me to find literature that reflected my child. And also, they gave him a different perspective of the African story. So when I found this place, I said, you know what? I have to sit down with you, hear your story, and understand how you develop this wonderful, wonderful uh, resource that's here in Ghana. So, so let's back up um, in the whole story. We were talking off camera that you are born in Ghana, mm -hmm. but you traveled outside and came back, right? Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about your background as to um, maybe where you schooled, and then when you travel outside, you know, where did you go and then why you came back to Ghana? Sure. Um, so I, I would backtrack to high school. Um, I went to um, SOS Hellman Minor International College here. Um, and the motto of the school is knowledge in the service of Africa. And so um, what happens a lot from that high school is that a lot of people would go to um, university outside Ghana. But we always have that motto at the back of our minds and um, somehow find ways to come back home um, to just come and contribute um, to the development. Uh, we had students from different African countries there, so that's where I learned Pan-Africanism and that's mm -hmm. where my first roommates were Kenyan and Ethiopian and I started to fall in love with the continent then. Wow. And so um, I, after finishing high school at SOS AGIC, um, I went to college at Mount Holyoke College. And that was also another place that was very diverse. It's one of the most diverse um, colleges in the US. And uh, we had a rich and African um, community and we had a rich um, African and Caribbean students association. And so after college, I worked in, 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 in DC for a year and decided to come back home. Um, and then after I got here, I got the opportunity to work with another Pan African, like with a Pan African organization. So my first, like, because when I was in DC, I was interning, but it was like paid internships. <laughs> but um, I got my first full time job with the African Leadership University, um, which is a sister organization to the African Leadership Academy based in South Africa. And usually people would know the academy because it's mm -hmm. been there longer. And the goal of that institution or those institutions is to develop a next generation of African leaders and so you come out of there as a student or even staff member um, or faculty have having the continent in mind and no matter where you end up you know that you want to develop the continent or do something to develop the continent and I think all these different experiences um, helped in shaping up what we see um, is. Wow wow that's amazing you said a phrase that stood out to me. You said, that's where I learned to fall in love with Africa. Please expound on that. What, what do you mean by that? Oh, I mean, when, when I was in high school, first of all, just um, walking in, it was a boarding school, walking in the first um, day, and then I knew it was Pan-African, but I think I did not know 
a lot about the school and then walking in and finding out that my roommate that I was like sharing a bunk with um, was Kenyan and then the person in the next side of the room um, was from Ethiopia I, it was it was it was really exciting um, I got I started to learn a lot about the continent just everybody sharing um, stuff we used to have um, a, a lot of traditions that celebrated the continent mm -hmm. there and um, it just started to 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 show me the beauty of the continent the potential we had and how I could contribute to building that potential mm -hmm. um, and then um, by serendipity or just like um, I'm Christian, so by how God had designed it, I think I was just designed for the continent. Because wow. um, after that, I just kept on finding myself in communities that celebrated home for me. Even if I wasn't in Ghana, it was celebrating home and different countries on the continent, which I also consider home. Wow, this is this is this is very 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 good information. Um, and you know, I had a similar experience myself. Um, in 2006, I became a Christian. And then I remember like asking, where are the, like, where are the stories? Where, where like, where, where am I in the story? Mm -hmm. And I became a part of an amazing organization in the United States called the Impact Movement, which mm -hmm. uh, services communities of African descent, a Christian organization. It's actually an organization that mobilized me to come to Ghana for the first time okay. in 2007. So that mm. was my gateway. Um, but when we hear about coming from Ghana to the U.S., Oftentimes the narrative is, the goal is to get there and close your eyes <laughs> and never look back. I know it was college and it may not have been as long as other people, but what were some of those experiences like when you went to the U.S.? How did it differ from your, your life here in Ghana? Well, I, I think one, um, one thing that was very different was when I started, I don't know if you read the book Americana by Chimamanda, I think um, it's about a Nigerian student who goes to the U.S. for college and her experiences were, um, for a lot of us that went to the U.S. for college, it was very much like ours. So that's when I started realizing, like, I was black. That was mm. one, one thing that definitely, like, was different and stood out. And so my race started um, coming into play a lot. Um, just like walking around campus, I, I mean, I knew I was going to a school that was not in my country, so I definitely yeah. have um, white people. But then I started becoming very, very aware of my heritage. I was, I've been aware of my heritage or where I came from and home mm -hmm. um, before I went because of high school and as being proud of our country. But now it was a different awareness of my um, heritage and my, my race. And so I started getting very conscious. And that I think that even gingered me more to mm -hmm. want to do um, something that was related to the continent wow. after, after school. Yeah. I mean, so I have, I have to stay here just for a second because sure. it's such an interesting <laughs> dynamic because, I mean, that's my whole life. I'm always conscious of what I look like and everything mm -hmm. except when I come to Ghana. So what did that feel like to come from a place where you don't, you don't think about the color of your skin? Then you go to a place where you're you become like how does that feel for someone um how did it feel i i the blessing of mount Holyoke was that african and caribbean um student organization and so i mean i i even though i i i became aware of my race i'm um, especially like sitting in classrooms after a class if i um, if I hadn't had a pleasant experience because somebody would make an off-putting um, mm. comment, especially like in economics classes that were focused on development, if mm. I was an economics major. And so if I was sitting in any class that somebody just made some off-putting comments, I could go back into my haven of friends mm. that um, would, would validate me and would make me just feel good again. And that was the blessing of the school that I went to. I know that it's not all my friends that had that kind of experience but for me um i always had like a, a sort of like haven that i could go back into yeah wow wow this so so that's really powerful and just as a side note so my background is in higher education so i was the person on on campus that 
uh, was like a part of the office that facilitated those groups and mm -hmm. organizations to make sure that you guys are special. You, you had a place <laughs> because we know that when you move from any place to a new place, you have to have community. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a community, just someone to sit around and laugh and not have to explain the joke, mm -hmm. as we say. Yes, basically. Eat the same foods, talk about the same artists and all these things. So, hey, shout out to all the higher ed administrators watching. <laughs> um, so, fast forward, you come back to Ghana and we know that Booksy didn't just start from anywhere. So take us back to where this concept started from. Sure, I think it, it, um, Booksy started probably around the time, I mean, officially it started in 2018, um, late 2018, but the things for Booksy started being planted probably like around the time I was graduating from college. So a friend of mine, um, a Nigerian friend of mine that I met on campus, we, I think we were having a conversation just before we graduated about how we wanted to write children's books. Mm. And so one random day, whilst we were both job hunting, <laughs> I think we, we met over Skype and we started putting a manuscript together. And after we were done putting this story together, we started trying to find, um, to publish it. And we started reaching out to publishing houses and stuff, and we didn't get anywhere. And so that experience kind of like um, was a seed for Bootsy. Um, so it didn't get anywhere. We just went, she's now a doctor. So she went on, to, she's still in the US, went on to medical school. I, I, I worked in DC and then came home and then worked with this African Leadership University. Um, but after, um, while I was working there and after, after I decided that I wanted to leave the African Leadership University because I was in Mauritius. And oh, so okay. I spent about two and a half years in Mauritius doing that. Wow. And then, which was a, a lot of fun, but <laughs> it's a story for another day. Um, after that, um, deciding to come back home, I knew I wanted to, to do something for myself. So when I came home, I um, worked at a um, another an African organization. It's just serendipitous the way things wow. have happened for me. But um, it's called Meltwater Entrepreneurial School of Technology. I'm based in, in East Ligon. And what happens is people go through um, a year of training to become software entrepreneurs. Wow. So we want to see if we're going to get the next phase for coming out of Africa. Wow. Wow. And so, yes, yeah, so I taught communications because the people who go through three disciplines, communications, um, business, and technology. And then at the end of their training program, what they do is they pitch to um, in a panel of investors and then they get about 100 to 150,000 to go off of um, the, the school. So we have a training program, we have an incubator, and there's a bridge that's be between the training program and the incubator. So you literally like cross the bridge from the training program into the incubator mm -hmm. if you do get the seed funding to go off and start your, um, your business wow. or your software company. And so whilst there at well, just seeing the entrepreneurs in training that I was um, working with or was teaching communications, just seeing them putting their businesses together. Um, I, de I had decided that, okay, I would want to also put a business together. And I wanted to bring my two um, things that I enjoy, which is um, working with children and um, books. And so knowing that my friend Tolu and I hadn't um, had the opportunity to publish our book, and it's still not published yet. We're trying to, we're still figuring out how to do this um, publishing thing. I decided to like get into the industry and find out how things work. And then there was a lot of ideating and then finally books started as a subscription service okay. um, that was curating books written by African authors um, with primarily African um, characters, especially as the, as the main character, the protagonist mm -hmm. of the story. Um, and then making those available to people over a certain period. And so like when you sign up, you would either come pick a, a subscription plan that lasted for three months or six months or nine months. And then over that period, we'll send you a number of books, um, depending on the cadence you, you picked up. Um, but that's what it started as, and it's, it's going to become a bit more than that, yeah. Wow, wow. That's truly powerful. It, it's inspiring because it really just shows you the power of an idea and what can happen when you have an idea and you, you, you actualize it and, and how and, and how people, you know, they say if you build it, then people will come. <laughs> and people like me are looking for stuff like this, to be honest. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we're trying to find books that are unapologetically African and mm -hmm. tell that story. Mm -hmm. So 
why is this important to have children's books with the protagonist being, you know, uh, the one that looks like them? Why not? It doesn't matter what some will say. Yeah. So then why is this your particular passion? It's very important because whether we know it or not, the things that we um, see around us, the things that we consume in terms of media, um, from the magazines, the billboards, the storybooks in our homes, they shape who we are, they shape our confidence. Like, um, And then even in, they, they, they shape our idea of ourselves and how we grow into our own if you call it that so it's important for children to start seeing themselves in books so that from a very young age we know that they matter because somebody has gone through the the process of i mean when a lot of children come here they don't know how books are made they just see <laughs> they just see the book but after they start encounter, encountering the books that um have the main character with a name that like yes or somebody <laughs> that they <laughs> know it, it shows that uh, me too, I matter, and me too, somebody can write a story that um, has a Kofi character, and the Kofi is in class with somebody called, and um, who's teach, science teacher is called Miss um, Boateng, uh -huh. oh, and I have a friend called Miss Boateng. It, 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 it starts to shape who you are. You know, like, it's something that we are not, I mean, the adults are more conscious of it, but as a child, you are not, but by the time you are an adult, you see that all these things have contributed to being who you are, and it's wow. very, very important. Wow, wow. My, my son is uh, four years now, and it's interesting because now when he picks up a book, as you said, he'll relate it to his friends. Mm -hmm. Like the character may not have a name, but he'll say, oh, daddy, that's Kofi. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, and he's naming these mm -hmm. kids in his class. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's my teacher, Miss such and such. Mm -hmm. So he's, re and, and he's four. So I think about how impactful that is at that age. And I also think about the opposite. What happens when our children don't see that? And all they see is characters that don't look like them. Um, quick story, I remember being in um, Cape Coast where we do some work with my nonprofit organization. Because we bring people from the U.S. to Ghana. Okay. And uh, I remember one of the children, she was feeling very upset. And I say, well, you know, what's, what's the matter? She said, I'm not doing so well on my exams. So I'm looking at the stuffs. And when I look at the curriculum, it's all like she has to memorize these colloquialisms that I would know because I'm American. And it's things like, born with a silver spoon in your mouth. You have to translate the meaning. Okay, I know this because... Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. if this normal child is taking fufu with their hand, so where's the... Silver spoon. Yeah, so, yeah, where's the... Or shooting, like, so these things that are totally irrelevant, and it makes me just uh, reiterate what you're saying, how important it is to tell our own stories through our own voices through our own writers. Mm -hmm. What are some of the responses that you get from maybe schools or organizations that you work with, um, you know, with, with this organization? Um, well, when we started, we, I tried to um, go into schools and try, and try to show them that there was a place I was curating content that they could use in schools. I didn't have a lot of success then. But now we've had a few schools approach us and say, oh, we are looking to diversify the, the stuff that we use especially for supplementary reading. So then we'd put together a list of books for them because, because we are a literacy center as well and that teaches children to read. We know, um, we, we understand what, like, a, what a child at any reading level can read. And so what we're able to give to schools now is, okay, if this child is in class one, this is a book that mm. we can suggest. If this child is in class two, this is a book that we can suggest because we know average class one children, what words they um, are able to read, where their decoding skills are, where they are with phonics. And so we're able to suggest um, that. So in the beginning, we didn't really get a response from them, but now um, we're getting them coming and reaching out um, to partner to find how they can bring books into their curriculum and what books um, they can give to children at different class levels. Wow. Okay, so you, you have partnerships with schools. Now, what about someone who is just interested in getting a, a, a book for their child? Do you have, you know, books that they can purchase or what may have you, or how would that work? Oh, yes. So we, um, we have an online bookshop. So if you want to get books from us, you can get it in two ways. You can either sign up um, uh, and get a subscription, or if you want more control, because with a subscription, you don't have a lot of control about the books. We, you, tell, you give us some parameters, and then we send you books based on those, that, um, those parameters. And we have an element of surprise. 
um, because we, first of all, we want children to get excited and find that, oh, they're going to get a book. And so we wrap the books up. Um, if you are a subscriber, when you get your books, they, they come wrapped up. And then you have to unwrap it and then mm. see what's in there. And that element of surprise is exciting because we know some of um, our subscribers, their children, uh, well, when is our booksy box coming? When is our booksy box coming? Um, so you have subscription and then you have the online bookshop. If you want more control, want to pick out things yourself, you can go there and pick out books by yourself. And then some people don't want subscription or they don't want the online bookshop. They just share their budget. They share the interest of their children. So right now he's really into cars or right now she really, really, um, this, uh, my, my, my daughter or my son is really interested in this subject area. What are books you can su suggest? So we are able to help people pick out books based on that. Okay. So, those kind wow. of things, yeah. so then who are the, or where do the contributing authors for this library of books come from? Um, some authors come to us, they hear about Booksy, the way you heard about Booksy, and then they're like, oh, I have a book. Would you be interested in it? And so then they go through the process of, uh, which is it's not a very complicated process, <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, okay, to our bookstore. <laughs> and then um, some of them, we, we scour the internet, social media. Okay. Um, so we are, we are looking for people, and people come to us as well. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. Now, I asked about the response of the schools. Now, what about the children? How do the children feel? I, before we came off camera, they were around watching some, some things, online learning. What, are their, what is their responses when they come in? Oh, um, they, they're excited. So, uh, one thing that I, I went out said that um, helped me see that, oh, okay, she's caught what books he is. She said, oh, it's like a library, but you can play at this library and you, you don't have to shout. So yes, when they come here, what, what we do is that we will we, we have a lot of like book activities that we do with them and then we pair that with other activities. But we have toys um, as well that they can play with. And so they get excited, they'll read, they'll do some arts and crafts activity, get their hands dirty, paint or something, and then they can play if they, they need um, to. But um, I want to share this story though. Know, um, one of the children he met here, his dad um, doesn't work far from here, so he brings him, he, he's on holiday, that's why he's here at the moment. So we brought him in the morning, and then during his lunch break, he came over just to come and hang out with his children. And um, his son pulled out the book that his dad is called Kofi. Mm. And so we have a book here um, that is a series around a boy called um, Kofi, mm -hmm. Kofi Opoku. And so he pulled the book and put in that Kofi, Kofi, just like trying to narrate one of the the stories to him and literally that's what I that's what I want for books. Mm, um, mm, for you mm. to see a name um, that's your dad's name and then point that out to your dad and share that story with your dad or your friend. Um, that's that's what Booksy is here for. Um, and that's been the other response um, wow. to it. My final question for you would be um, well I'll back up and say all, all of the information will be in description below so definitely check that out it's right there in the description so make sure you go to this website seek out the information right now you can see it <laughs> um, but the final question I have is someone watching this that may be on the path that you were on where they fell in love with Africa and they're trying to decide how do I materialize this idea I have it may not be a bookshop it may be something else what motivation what encouragement would you give to that person I would say do it. Um, I would say start, start small. When um, we started, we partnered with this um, really awesome lady who decided to give us a space to meet um, as a book club once a month. Uh, she was based at the Impact Hub in Osu. She had like a little coffee shop there. And so our partnership was, which, um, we would come and do our book club there. She would give us food and the space. And that that, that was, it, was it. You started, um, especially if it's a place Wait, if, if the idea is something that um, if the idea is something that's based off of like let's say a problem that you've had it's, it's probably that a lot of people mm. have had that problem as well and so when you start to see the people who um, have been looking for your solution coming coming to you I mean one thing I forgot to say in this before um, Booksy start, started my sister had started having children and as a bookworm, I wanted my nephew mm -hmm. to become a bookworm. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to just buy him random books. Mm -hmm. And so I was finding books 
I was trying to find books, but they were all siloed, and so I was like, okay, let's bring them all into one space. I can and change. then, basically, other people were like, ah, I've been looking for books, mm-hmm. African books. Yes. Basically, so then that's how, even though I had started with wanting to publish a book, I ended up with a bookshop. And so when you have an idea, you start thinking about it, you start ideating, you start doing something around it. Finally, you see that it will take shape. Um, the shape it is now and probably the, what it's going to look like 10 years from now are going to be a bit different. Um, but we'll always have our goal of like giving, celebrating African children through books or African school books. And I, the area that we have chosen is working with children. You may do it with adults, but you just literally have to like start and then it would take, take shape as you start. Mm, yeah. Wow. Well, I, I, I'm so grateful that you took some time to be with me today. I'm, I'm really encouraged by your story. And just to reiterate, it's so needed. This is exactly what I've been looking for for my son. And I'm sure that many people watching will feel the same way. Mm-hmm. So once again, thank you so much. Um, and for you, thank you so much for tuning in. We certainly appreciate it. As always, if you like this content, make sure you subscribe. Mm-hmm. Make sure you like the video. <laughs> Until next time, peace. Bye. Bye.